guys, I'm Peter from Build a Boeing. This is an audio selector panel. It's a, a panel where you can choose what you want to listen to in your cockpit and uh, what you want to trans to whom you want to transmit. This is an OEM panel, which means it's from a real aircraft, and um, you have three of these in the cockpit: two in the pedestals and then one in the aft overhead. This isn't from a Boeing 737NG, it's, um, I'm not sure it's from a Classic or perhaps a Boeing 727, but the functions are the same. I bought these, I bought this a few years ago and I've had it laying around and then about a year ago I decided to interface the switch down here so that I could transmit, um, I could use this as a push to talk button when transmitting, uh, flying online and transmit to the ATC. And I think I did a separate video about that. I ran into some problems while doing that. Um, it wasn't that easy because there's some electronics inside this box that needed to be powered in order for the switch to work. So I just ended up bypassing uh, everything inside and just directly wiring this to my interface board. But then in the spring, I um, went with an intercom system using the ProSim package so that pilot and co-pilot can talk together and also transmit to the ATC. And then I really started having a use of this box because now I needed to choose if I wanted to listen to uh, the VHF1 radio or perhaps number two. And I also needed to be able to turn up and down the volume of the ATC or whoever I wanted to listen to. So I decided to start interfacing this panel and it's taken me a few weeks, but now I'm finally finished. And uh, let me just go through what has happened with this. I did a bit of research and um, some people said you can use the wiring, existing wiring uh, inside. And um, I found a wiring diagram. It's, uh, it has these two cannon plugs on the back, but I couldn't find uh, the, the part that goes onto these plugs. Um, Unless I wanted to pay to pay to sorry, unless I wanted to pay a hundred and hundred and fifty dollars for each plug, and no, well, no. So I have these laying around now. The electronics inside. Well, let, let me just go over that for, uh, briefly. On an aircraft, as far as, as I have understood, everything inside this box is connected to this piece of electronics which is placed here on the back normally it sits in there and so the audio signals goes into this box and then depending on what you select here and uh, how you turn up and down the volume the audio signals is processed on this board what it does I don't know there's some wires running into it and um, it somehow filters the signals amplifies them and then uh, let leave and then they leave the board and they go out to the speakers whereas in a simulator everything happens on your computer so here the signal processing is happening inside this box if i press one of the buttons let's say this one i want to listen to vhf1 the signal is then transmitted through the switches it's coming into the board then leaving the board again uh, because i've turned the switch on in your cockpit, the computer wants to know that you've pressed the switch. You need to send an on or off signal outside this box to your computer. And when you turn the volume up and down, that is also handled by your computer. It turns the volume in your speaker up and down. So don't have any need for this. So away it goes. Then the wiring, could I just use the wiring? Well, I tried, but no. Here we have the potentiometer, and this is the switch. And they were all wired together in different ways that I couldn't quite figure out. But one of the strange things was that this is a potentiometer, and when you turn it down, no voltage should go through. Let's say it's um, supplied with five volts, then here it's zero, and when I turn it all the way up, I should get five volts in return. And when I turned it up like this, that would also happen. When I got to around 50%, I would get two and a half volts back but then the strange thing was when I turned it further up the voltage would start dropping again which was very strange but once I ripped it for all the wires it behaved normally so I just got it the whole thing all the wires 
away from all the switches and then I just started rewiring it myself and now it works perfectly. It's connected here to a Pokies 57E card as you can see here and uh, it's an Ethernet version so it uses a network instead of USB plug. That's what I had laying around and um, I'm actually quite pleased with the wiring. You can see all the wires bundled up here, running nicely along. Uh, normally my wiring is, is, is spaghetti line, so this is actually quite good. The switches, like this one up here, they're double wired, which means that each switch has two gray wires and then of course a ground wire connected to them, so that if one of the wires should come loose, God forbid, I have a spare, I have a backup. The lightning is also something that's a bit interesting on this uh, on this box. It's lit with these light bulbs. They are five volts and um, they leave a very nice and um, yellowish light, which looks very authentic and it should because it is authentic. That's the good thing about it. The, the bad things about it is, well, first of all, that one there, uh, the black one, that's burned out, so I couldn't use that one, but wait, okay, doesn't matter. But it runs on five volts, and everything else in my backlighting is 12 volt LED based. So I went with upsides and downsides for a few days, and then finally I decided to take the lightning out and replace it with LEDs. That maybe turns out to be a sin, but um, here you have the 20 LEDs. And the lightning on this panel is actually very special. These uh, 20 LEDs, that's all the light there is to it. It's backlight, but it's also indicator lights. And let me try to explain that. If you look at this switch here, let's see if we can get that image sharp. There we are. If you if we look at this, you can see there's a white ring here, and it's black there, and then there's a white transparent ring, and then it's black again. And so if we look at the back plate here, the LEDs, they light into these holes, as you can see here, okay? But these rings here, they're white. So the light goes into these holes and then is emitted out of these holes onto the switch. For all the different holes, except for these two, because that's the toggle switches in the bottom, you need don't need that function here. But let me just show you what happens here. If I put it back in, See if I can do that with one hand. There we are. Okay, so now the light is. If I turn this switch on, it goes into the light plate, and you can see the switch light on. Now it's off. And it all has to do with the light going in that white circle there. There's no um, individual indicators on each of these switches, it's just a matter of pushing it in so that it's lit up from the light plate. That's a very special design. In a cockpit, you would like an LED uh, as an indicator, giving you uh, the, sorry, I'm messing around with the camera here. There we are. You would like an indicator to indicate you have turned it on. You cannot do that here. So when I push the VHF2 button as I do here, it lights up and then I just hope that the uh, simulator registers this push that it's activated as well, I have no way of checking that. So I would really like an indicator light indicating to me from ProSim, yes, this is activated, but I cannot do that. Up here is the same, you can see it goes on here. This white one here, I 3D printed that one. It doesn't look as good as the other ones, they are um, in clear resin, I reckon, and this is just printed PLA, but uh, it will do, the box came without, so I'll have to, to live with that. On the back, I'll just quickly run through that. I have a network uh, here, network plug for the uh, Pokies card. Five volts here, and these one, I haven't labeled them yet. They are for the backlighting. And I have two, so that the, signal, the, the power can come in and I can daisy chain it to the next panel. Um, because this is just not 12 volts, it comes from a dimmer so that uh, the LEDs can dim with the rest of the pedestal. I hope that makes sense. 
I was hoping to be able to save some of the wiring on this unit, but it just didn't make any sense. Uh, Gunning all the wires made all the switches behave as supposed to, and um, taking out the light bulbs and replacing them with LEDs just made everything easier because now I can dim them together with the rest of the pedestal. I just need to interface it now. That's going to be the job for tomorrow. I'm Peter from Bilibo. You guys take care. Bye-bye.